Welcome, mercenaries. It's Osama. Welcome to the Syndicate. Today we have a special episode today in the Syndicate. If you read the title down below and clicked on this video, you're in tune for a good surprise. What we have today is a world-renowned, famous design that has been converted to a semi-automatic shotgun. We're talking about an AK pattern style shotgun and imported from the motherland, Mother Russia, made by the famous Izhmash factory. We have the Sega 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun converted to 922R compliance. Modern sporting semi-automatic shotgun. Stand by. At mercenaries, at ease. All right, rank and file. Here she is in the gun guard by Plano. Plano case. As you can see, I keep tags on stuff, so it's just how I roll. Guess I just don't never have time just to rip it off. I mean, I could do it right now, but it ain't bothering nobody. So enough talking. Let's get into it, rank and file. And this might surprise you, but it's just how it is. Case. Need another case. So this rifle sock here, rifle shotgun sock, is actually made by Midway. Midway's not any way, shape, or form or fashion affiliated with Osama Bin Smoking TV or the Syndicate television show. But check them out. Very affordable. In the Donatello purple, if I had to call it that. So yeah. Smooth. Plano out the way. Tell Midway to bust it on the open. And bam. Woo! Empty. Safety. So clear. Everything's good to go. So Yes, this is a converted 922R compliant imported from Mother Russia herself from the ever famous Izhmash factory. This is an actual, true Russian built AK 12 gauge semi auto shotgun that has been converted after importation by the buyer. So these came into the country not as shown, not like this. Only thing that this came in the country with, I would say a cap barrel thread. This muzzle brake did not come with it. A factory two position gas plug for the piston. This hand guard here was a flunky looking traditional stock uh, hand guard. Uh, came with the side rail, the mount optics, that's a given. And this trigger and the housing were mounted back here where the pistol grip was. And you had a traditional shotgun stock, Monte Carlo stock. So actually, it was like this, you know, you had to go like this, the magazine well and the paddle safety haven't changed, but the trigger was originally back here in the pistol grip. I wish I was very good at the editing tip where I could just insert a picture while still talking. Maybe I can try it on another video or maybe get a better editing software, but besides talking about that, and I'll do a close up later on just to show the markings, import markings, because this rifle was actually imported in the country from a company called RWC Group, Russian Weapons Company Group. 
And I believe they were out of Tullytown, Pennsylvania. I think this is the import market here, says. Yeah, Tullytown, Pennsylvania, USA. So they were imported from Russia straight to here through Pennsylvania by RWC. So you got actually Russian produced goods imported by a Russian company. So hell of a job they did coming up with these Sega rifles. And they're actually called Sega S A I G A. 12 so sega 12 gauge and the sega rifle is worldly renowned for their craftsmanship on building these ak's so to give a rundown on this gun i actually took some notes not really good at getting that train of thought in hand because i do everything one take usually maybe two or three i've been splitting it up now so when I tell you stand by, you know, we're switching over. So I'm just going to read a little information on my little note card here because it's a lot. And I know people are watching and I want to give very accurate information. You know, before I say anything, I do my research to make sure things that I say are true. I know sometimes I might spill and say something's the wrong part. I mean, I know we all do, but back to it. So this rifle here, well, not just the rifle, but the company and the Russian rifles, unfortunately, uh, came into a dilemma. So, July 16th of 2014, 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama, issued a sanction on Russia from importing uh, Russian weaponry. Well, I mean, that's not the only thing that they, you know, sanctioned them on, but that was a, a key point. So, they were already... Uh, hard to acquire because of importation laws. So the Gun Control Act of 1968, which is a very informable and I wouldn't call it important, but a crazy piece of legislation that was passed. And it made a ruling saying that certain imported rifles or shotguns coming into the country could only be imported under a certain configuration. And so when I was alluding to earlier, where trigger, housing and everything was back here, where the grip and it had the traditional Monte Carlo stock, not only were the shotguns brought in like that, but the other regular semi-automatic rifles, so other pattern Sega rifles like in 545, uh, Soviet or 762 Soviet or the 556, you know, 223 rifles that came in also looked like that, also because of the importation rules on the stuff coming from Russia. They already banned the stuff from China in the mid to late 80s, like 87, 89, or maybe that was the start of the talks uh, coming in. Maybe the ban really didn't come in place about early 90s, like before, like 92, 93. But don't quote me on that. I'll have that maybe in the description box at the end of the video. So it was imported in in the traditional uh, design. And the way for you to combat um, to get them to look like this, like a modern uh, sporting shotgun, is that 922R became a compliance. So basically, we'll just use, for an example, 20 parts on a gun, make a list of uh, parts on a gun. So that's talking about stock, pistol grip, trigger, housing, magazine, bolts, bolt carriers, and numerous things. And I'll read off my little notes here uh, after I finish saying what I'm stating. And so with that ruling coming in, if you wanted to have a nice... A toy like this that was kind of import limited or import or anti-importable, you know, which had to come in stripped naked. You couldn't put together the parts with foreign parts. So that's the whole reason of the 922R is to basically give the purchaser, you have to use, I want to say a minimum of 10 parts. They have to be United States made parts. I'm sorry, baby. Has to be 10 parts. So you can only have a maximum 
of 10 foreign parts. Also, I meant to uh, say receivers and frames are covered. Uh, trunnions are covered. And there's other few things. I'm going to go off the list probably about right here because now I need to get into the thick of the law. So, Title 18 of the United States Code, Chapter 44, Section 922, Subsection, subsection 1, excuse me. It shall be unlawful for any person to assemble from imported parts any semi-automatic rifle or shotgun, which is intended or identical to one uh, rush, uh, rifle or shotgun prohibited from importation under Section 925D3 of this chapter as not being particularly suitable for a readily adoptable to sporting purposes. So I know I kind of stumbled, but in order for me just to break that down, so in summary, certain foreign rifles and shotguns are prohibited from importation into the United States and assembling them with foreign parts is illegal. So keyword, bringing in an imported rifle and assembling them with foreign parts. So basically coming in, the rifle is already going to have a numerous uh, amount of parts that are going to be foreign. So for you to make this conversion happen, we swapped out a butt stock, pistol grip, trigger, trigger housing, hand guard, gas plug, muzzle attachment, magazine and it might be another one we'll just probably just say bolt carrier and that should be about 10 parts right there so those are 10 uh u.s parts that we can have in here to make it 922 r compliant so as saying in summary certain foreign rifles and shotguns are prohibited from importation into the united states and assembling them with foreign uh, parts is illegal so complying with 922R is using 10 American parts out of a list of 20 parts. So that would mean half, with 10 foreign parts being the maximum amount of uh, parts. So the list of parts includes frames, receivers, receiver castings, forgings, or stampings, barrels, barrel extension, mounting blocks or trunnions, Muzzle attachment, bolt, bolt carrier, op rod, gas piston, trigger housing, trigger, hammer, sear, disconnector, butt stop, pistol grip, four, uh, four uh, grip or four unit, foremost hand guard. <laughs> Handwriting ain't all that too good, mercenary. Right now here in the desert. Magazine bodies, followers, and floor plates. So, numerous amount of parts are on here. Make it 922 are compliant. So, this does have a, I want to say this is the Carolina shooting supply. Uh, I think it's a six position uh, gas port from the original two. So, with this shotgun, I can shoot basically almost any load. Um, bird shot, buck shot, uh, slug, wad cutter, uh, anything. Target load, you can shoot anything out of here. And like I said, this break, hey, so what's that? Three ports, three ports, three on the top. So we have nine ports all together, six on the side, three on the top. So really should keep that kick real low. And also forgot to mention that when these came in, they were brought in with five round magazines. And I don't believe this is the original. And I don't even know if it even fits. Well, that's all of that. So looking at it, this is an original Ishmash magazine. Like I say, I'll probably show it up to the camera later. And Give y'all a close up. So original five round magazine. Like I say, not bad, not bad. Then 
We upgrade to a big boy 10. Let's see. Oh. This one hasn't been converted. So this one doesn't fit. You see it, it rocks, but it doesn't lock in. So I have to do a little dremeling on this back little notch here to get it to lock in. So 10 rounder. So I had the X on it. I didn't look at it before. It was over there on the back side. If I were looking, pay attention, I wouldn't have grabbed it. And big boy, what is this, 20 rounder? Yeah, 20 rounder. Now I know this one works for sure. I made sure maybe I could get a, what you call that? What you call that? Maybe I can get a good thumbnail to put, to get people to click on it. So like my clickbait. So yeah, 20 rounder. Locked round in there, little wiggle, little wiggle, but still pretty tight. And like I say, 20 rounders, got a few of these, got a few 10 rounders, and I think I got two of the original five round mags. So this is a, and you can see the American flag, so it's an American company, Surefire Gun Mags LLC, never heard of them. Heard of Surefire, but not, those, but not that Surefire. So, also on the left side here, we have two sling attachments, right here on the rear of the stock, right here on the beginning of the forearm. It's a little mount right here. So, I thought about making this like a home defense shotgun, but I got something else better for that. I have a... Uh, Mossberg 590A1, and I'm going to tack that one out, trick that one out real well. And I think that's going to be the home defense shotgun. I don't really have one, so to say, but, you know, I have other things to suffice. So, I think right about now, I bring the rifle up to the camera, let y'all get some marks of the rifle. So, you can see that it is the real McCoy. You know, we don't play games over here at Osama Been Smoking TV. Osama uh, has some nice toys. So the loadout is always mission specific and you never know. Your shotgun might be mission uh, specific. Especially if I got a few of these and I got them just mounted on my belt and when it's time to reload, just whip that bad boy out, rip this on off, rack it, Send it around in the uh, chamber. Have about three of these. Hell, we can't clear a house or at least a compound. At least expect to get into a gunfight with three of those drums. And I would even just come in with a little 10 round stick like that. Let that just be my first mag. And if we need to, you know, get real funky, I'll throw the drum in there. Because you got to remember, all those extra rounds in the magazine will actually make this rifle a bit heavier. And maybe, and just maybe, I'll one day mount an optic. Don't know what kind of optic. Or if I'll mount it up here, maybe in the front. Uh, put some type of red dot on it. Nice old red dot, like a zero to about like 20 yards. Probably, probably won't do less than that because it's home defense. And, you know, shotgun close quarters, maybe about what, 10 yards maybe? I don't even think that because I'm thinking about tighter quarters. So then with this long 19, 20 inch barrel, uh, yeah, it's too, too long and big for home defense, but mission specific loadout, I still throw a red dot on here. And like I say, if I'm going to something like a warehouse or something, I'll probably feel a little different because it's more air for me to move around and there's an extra barrel velocity. Oh man, you probably really do some good damage, but Besides that, let me go ahead and bring this rifle on up to the camera and let y'all get some uh, good picks up, good um, view of the rifle close up. Has some marks, it's been shot a little bit, but you know, it's all faithful here. So let's bring it to you and stand by.
All right, mercenaries. Here we go. See if we can get you a little some Sega 12 right there. I say just your regular old 12 gauge shotgun. Look at that. Woo! It's a mean break there. I bet it's real concussive in a, inside of close quarters. Inside a house. Alright. Let's go ahead and flip over and show some import marks. Let's see if we get focus. There we go. Let's see the US, that's a US part. In Russia by Ijmash. Look at those markings. True Russian. In that magazine, the five was rushing to it, that same marking. So, nice rifle. Keep calling it a rifle, but nice shotgun. Yeah? Yeah, that's it, mercenaries. So, hopefully you enjoyed meeting one of Russia's finest creations. I'm so glad I got to share it with y'all. In the rank and file. Maybe one day I'll shoot it. Not many places around here. Maybe it's the range that I go to don't really allow shotguns because people don't know how to shoot. They shoot the target hangers down or the lines holding the target and they just lose money. So some people just cut it out all together. So we'll have to go to a nice outdoor range. Maybe go to a WMA. I know about one or two of them. That's kind of close by in, in vicinity. And I don't mean close like 20, 30 minutes. So I'm at least about an hour, hour and a half. So, yeah. So, one day we'll get out and run some loads. Show y'all that it works. I just do all these tabletop reviews. Maybe one day I can add in some footage with some of the reviews when I do them. But that's another time, mercenaries. Thank y'all for tuning in to the syndicate. It's Osama. Finishing the briefing. All right, mercenaries. Stay armed, stay safe, stay dangerous, stay informed. Osama, out.